All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, quick warning before we get in, there are, there's audio attached to this um, because you can't really talk about musical skills without playing a few. Um, I'm hoping it's not too loud. They'll fine tune that from the back as soon as it comes up. The slides do swivel. And there's one gift that if you have problems with perspective or depth or motion, um, I'll warn you in advance, now's the time to look away. But uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about using musical scales to build harmonious and responsive typography. A few things about me that explain how the talk happened. First of all, I'm an amateur musician. Um, through my teenage years, I took piano lessons. At college, I took euphonium, tuba, trombone lessons, played in some wind ensembles, concert bands, fun stuff like that. Studied a lot of theory as well. Music, like many other things, ha has an art and a science component. And the theory is all the math and cool stuff behind it and what works and why. And I just really jumped into that. Now, secondly, I'm a curious developer. If you're a designer and you come to me with a comp or a style guide and it has like 19 font sizes listed, I'm gonna look and say, why? Why those 19 numbers? Why just a list of numbers? Why not a, a pattern? What's going on here? Because number three, when it helps me out, I can be a lazy developer. By which I mean, and many of you probably understand this, if I can automate it, if I can write a script that runs a pattern and spits out all the code I want instead of me typing everything manually, I'm way happier. That's what computers are there for, to do dumb, boring math stuff so that we can do more intelligent human things. So those are three things about me that turned into a side project uh, that I built for actually running font sizes in a browser on a website based on musical annotation. So first thing, let's talk about musical intervals and math. Every note is a number. Every musical note actually has a specific frequency. Frequency, of course, is vibrations per second. We measure those in hertz. Um, I suspect you already knew this. Um, again, uh, for the motion warning right now, if you've ever seen a trombone player, the longer the slide is, the lower the note. Music corresponds to length, to a dimension, to a measurement. Uh, same thing with a harp. The longer strings near the end produce lower tones, lower pitches, and the higher strings, the shorter ones at the top. And a xylophone. I love this kid. They're having the time of their life right there. The longer and wider keys on a xylophone produce lower pitches than the shorter, narrower ones. And if we took the lid off of a piano, we would see the same principle happening again. An orchestra will typically tune, if you go to orchestra concerts, they have that little tuning bit they do beforehand, they'll tune to what's called the concert A most often. That's measured at 440 hertz. This is a precise measurement. Almost every orchestra does it. Some of them will, will temper that note a little bit, but that's pretty much standard. If we're gonna move that A up an octave, let's say we move from tuning the clarinets to the flutes, what happens mathematically is the frequency of that A literally doubles from 440 hertz up to 880. If you took pianos, uh, piano lessons, everything starts on middle C is kind of what you get in the first year. That's rounded 131 hertz. If you go up one octave, the mathematical frequency of that pitch doubles precisely to 262. Another, oh, and here's a visual representation if you prefer seeing things. The, the graph on the bottom has twice as many peaks and troughs per distance, twice as many vibrations per second, so it would represent a pitch that's an octave higher than the graph above it. A fifth is another common musical interval, A to E or C to G, and again, it's 1.5 times the original frequency. If you go up a fifth on a piano, that's you know, five notes away, one hand, if you're still in first year lessons, from the bottom to the top, the, the pitch is exactly one and a half times the original note. Divide by one and a half to go down the same interval. And again, another visualization of those two waves. The one on the bottom is not quite as tightly packed. It's only one and a half times the top pitch. It would be up a fifth, musically speaking. And then there's a half step, and that's a crazy, crazy, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Precise and detailed long number, 10595. And uh, you don't have to memorize that. There's not a, a quiz later on. We, we don't need to worry about that. But the half step is kind of the building block of all Western music scales. Any music you're used to hearing at a petrol station or a restaurant or in the background of a movie, for the most part, is based on Western scales, and the half step is the building block there. All other intervals in the scale are exponents of the half step. Or to visualize the math, to go from an A to an A sharp, you multiply A's frequency by 1.0595. To go up yet another half step, you multiply A sharp by 1.0595, 
and now we're at a B, a whole step away from the A, two half steps. And of course, the math is the same uh, if you square it instead of doing two different multiplication operations. Now, what's that got to do with fonts and typography? Let's shift a little bit. We'll come back to music as we go. But talking about typography and modular scales in web development and web design. A couple different kinds of modular scales, single-stranded, and we'll learn in just a moment, multi-stranded. It's a single-stranded modular scale if every single interval, every step along the scale is the same. Visualize, this is like a good stairway. Every step is the same distance apart so you don't stumble. Um, in music, a half-step scale is a single-stranded modular scale. In a, in a Western octave, there, is, there are 12 half steps in that octave. Eight notes in a typical major scale, which we'll hear later on, um, but 12 half steps in that entire octave. And then the pattern repeats itself again and again, and it's always every note is 1.0595, the note before it. A musical whole step scale is also strictly single stranded modular. Now, what about multi-stranded modular scales? You say, those sound cool, but they're not exactly like what I really learned when I took music or what I'm used to. Um, so let's talk about multi-stranded scales. Here, every octave is a pattern, but the pattern repeats itself. However, the intervals inside that pattern aren't identical. In other words, single-stranded is like if you take a, a meter stick and every 10 centimeters you put a mark on it. And no matter how many meter sticks you repeat of that pattern, every single interval will be 10 centimeters because that's just how it works works. Multi-stranded, however, would be if you took a meter stick and you marked a notch at 30 and one at 50 and one at 75. None of those intervals are the same as each other, except for the last two between 50 and 75, but you can keep repeating that same meter stick pattern over and over again. That's multi-stranded. So let's listen to a major scale. Maybe a little piano lesson uh, flashback. Some of you may not have enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, the, the pattern there is whole, whole, half step, whole, 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 half step. Not all the intervals are identical, but every octave, that pattern repeats itself. A minor scale is the same way, but with those intervals in a different order. So that's what they sound like. What would we do to put these into play as an actual web technique? There are a whole mess of libraries and articles you can go to that already have parts of this puzzle implemented. Uh, modular scale, you may have seen the SAS library and the website that goes with it. Scott Kellum and Tim Brown contribute to this one and maintain it. You can actually go to a website and pick like a scale interval and a starting font size and even set up a couple different strands if you want to do multi-stranded and it will spit out a CSS file for you at the end that you can then import into your project and start using those, assign them to classes or assign them to individual selectors. A SAS line does a similar thing with an emphasis on baseline uh, alignment. Type settings, is that you? No? You've worked on one, right? Type, okay, cool. Harry's worked on another one that I don't think is on this slide. Um, but yeah, the rest of them basically do some flavor of the same work. They create a mathematical modular scale and let you assign CSS selectors to them and get the right font sizes. And what we're doing from a designer's point of view is creating visual hierarchy. We're creating font sizes that are enough different and distinct from each other that users on your site don't wonder, is this like an H2 or an H3? Not that they think with that word usually. Uh, you know, is this a heading, a subheading, a block? But we're giving variety to show how important information is. And the last point on here, uh, the List Apart article called More Meaningful Typography describes uh, the theory behind implementing a multi-stranded modular scale. It's not a code base of its own, though. So now let's put these things together. We've kind of talked about the theory behind musical scales and mathematics and type scales and modularity. Now, what do musical intervals lined up to the type specimens they represent, the font sizes they would create, actually look and sound like? 
The octave, as we covered earlier in the introduction, is an even doubling. So here the headline is twice the font size of the body. Pretty simple, very basic, um, but that's how they look. It's, it's not horrible. Is it, it, I mean, there's nothing that guarantees, I should throw this disclaimer in maybe at some point, there's nothing that guarantees that using certain musical notes will automatically look beautiful in some way. There's a lot of trial and error and art to this still. Yeah, but let's look at another common interval, the fifth. It sounds like this. And the mathematical difference between those two frequencies is 1.5 times. So here the headline is one and a half times the size of the body underneath it. Let's try a smaller interval, a major third. Oops. Click the right button next time. A major third. Much closer to the original pitch. Uh, the frequency is only about 1.2-ish there, um, rounded. But here's a heading that's that distant, that same proportion away from the body copy. So that's intervals. What about scales? Can this create like actual systems of typography that are useful in real life? I think so. Here's a major scale. I'll play it first and then we'll talk about the numbers. So a major scale covers an entire octave as we heard it, which means how many unique pitches? Eight, yeah, oct, eight. That's uh, a good jump there. But we've only got five font sizes in our hierarchy here, so we don't actually use the entire musical scale. We only go first, second, major, third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and back down. And we get very tight, very clustered, not a lot of distinction font sizes out of that scale. So let's pick a scale with fewer intervals per octave. A pentatonic scale. Um, a lot of early American folk music, Irish and Scottish folk music as well, uh, uses what's called a pentatonic scale for melodies. If you've heard the song Amazing Grace at a funeral, bagpipe, or a church service, wherever, um, all the notes in the melody can be played on a pentatonic scale. The shorthand for that at five pitches per octave. If you're on a piano, you can play a pentatonic scale by just playing the black keys up and down, ignoring the white ones. But here's what it sounds like and looks like. Fewer pitches per octave, only five instead of eight, which means we start moving up through the font sizes more quickly. And this time we actually used almost all of them. We almost got up to perfect doubling. If we had had a sixth uh, font size in the hierarchy here, we would have hit two. And let's take an even more spread out scale, which is actually more of a chord, a major triad. And here you, can, here you can see the font size is increasing even more rapidly. By the time we get up to the top tier heading, we're at two and a half times the original font size, the font size of your body text. Now, of course, as you've probably become aware by now, there's almost nothing you can do left with CSS or front-end development that doesn't require some kind of responsive consideration. How does this work across breakpoints, across screen sizes? So I have some advice. Using a scale with more notes per octave lets us get more content onto perhaps a smaller screen size, a phone, a small tablet. We still have a distinct visible hierarchy, but we can fit more text on the page at once, and I'll show you some dangers we want to avoid in just a moment. A scale with fewer notes per octave, as we saw, iterates and increases font size more quickly and more rapidly, and that's better for a larger screen where you've got, you know, the 27-inch 5K iMac kind of user to consider, because um, everybody has their browser full width on that, right? I actually don't, but... But here's what happens if your font size is increasing too rapidly on, on mobile screens. And that's actually more of a hyphenation pro problem than font size, but they play in together. Or uh, 40 blog topics or entrepreneurs. <laughs> or this one, they just nothing happened and probability you know, just kind of leans out into the margin there. Um, yeah, 
URLs have been removed to protect the guilty in these screen caps. But you don't want to iterate through the font size too rapidly. And using a scale with more notes per octave, more intervals per octave on smaller screen sizes, smaller breakpoints, gives you the ability to, to maintain a distinct visual hierarchy without blowing up font sizes so large that they don't fit into the screen or that they force sideways scrolling, wiggles, or other issues like that. So I have uh, I've built a SAS library that does this for you. Um, you can find it today at typetuner.com. That alias is over to the GitHub repo where it lives. And we'll take just a second. I've got a few moments to talk you through the API. And then we can talk more about it or other related issues uh, in the discussion track later on. That is tiny and I apologize. So this starts with a list of labels that you as a developer choose to assign to your font sizes in the visual hierarchy. I typically do something like SM for small, P for paragraph, BQ for block quote, SSH for sub subheading, SH for subheading, H for heading, and hero for anything bigger than that. Your project needs may be different depending on what your, your site actually entails. So add include set hierarchy just contains a list that's the labels you intend to use to identify these font sizes throughout your project. And uh, yeah, you call them what makes sense to you. Add breakpoints um, actually exposes an API that you can use this to run your media queries as well. Um, but it takes a label, which is basically the key for that breakpoint unique identifier for it, a minimum width, the base font size for your paragraph, the line height for your paragraph, which Type Tuner actually uses behind the scenes to build a consistent vertical rhythm for elements as well. And then finally, a musical scale to use at that particular min width media query match. Uh, this has a remove breakpoint mixin that removes an existing breakpoint. There are three defaults, small, medium, and large, possibly XL, I don't recall. But you can undo resets or come in and modify somebody else's code without actually deleting their code using that one. And then all the magic happens in type tune. It takes a property, either the word extend or the word class, depending on your code philosophy using SAS's extend. It will either create the percentage placeholder uh, selectors for you, or it will create actual class selectors if you prefer to use those directly in your project. And with that, I am grateful for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to talk more, again, discussion track, or you can catch me on the internet. If it says JD Steinbach, it's like 90% probably me. And uh, yeah, I appreciate tweets, and you can look at the code for this on GitHub. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah.